Good family and friends of Grace Lutheran Church. I'm, I've, I'm trying to start a new video lesson entitled 10 Latin Phrases That Everybody Ought to Know. So I thought I'd start our first Latin or our first lesson with why. Why Latin? First of all, we have to remember that language is inherently intentional. And Latin is one of the most descriptive and most intentional of all the ancient languages. It also helps that it's the scholastic language of the ancient church fathers. It's also a dead language, means that nobody is currently speaking it, and so there's no movement in the language, there's no more development in the language, and really not a lot of disputes as to the meaning of the words. For the most part, when it comes to Latin, we know what the words mean. We don't have to argue about that anymore. Which makes it a very useful tool when talking in, with, and under with the postmodernists. Because the postmodernists, whose main goal is to, to atomize language, that is, deny truth, to deny truth. And most assuredly, any sort of capital T truth, read God's Word, which is like the El Capitan of, of capital T truth. Postmodernists, doomsday, doomsday weapon of choice is to deny the meaning of, of words. Which words? Well, basically all of them, but, but most specifically those words that carry sociological or psychological value. We'll see this as just a, an example, the difference between the words sex and gender. For the most part, sex and gender we've always considered to be synonyms. Properly speaking, sex was a verb and gender was a biological differentiation between male and female. Now, sex is used as a verb, but it's also used as a noun to define biology. And then gender has been hijacked to identify tastes, preferences, sexual appetites. There's now like 50 genders and they're still counting because, well, quite frankly, after you've redefined the word to mean taste or preference or appetite, the sky's the limit. You can see this happen with pronouns. You can also see it within the community of people who like to argue what the definition of is is. So why would we allow ourselves to be rid of truth? Well, if truth, capital T, can no longer be counted upon, then in the words of Protagoras, then man becomes the measure of all things. Of all things that are, of all things that are not, of the things that should be and the things that could be. We call this moral relativism. More sinister, it's the power given over to those who do control the words. We Christians can also see this moral relativism or the, the end goal of postmodernism as the age of the judges, when everyone did that which was right in their own eyes, which sounds, sounds totally sweet. It's a complete and utter freedom that everybody's just going to do whatever it is that they think is right. The problem is you, you can't have a civilized society if we can no longer agree on the meaning of words. What you have there is, is chaos. And there's nothing the beast likes more than chaos. Let the hearer hear. So learning a few Latin phrases, truth with a capital T, it not only insulates you from falsehood, but it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's an act of intellectual defiance. It's an act of spiritual warfare. Oratio, meditatio, tentatio. Maybe we'll start with those tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for listening. Bye.